Oh, I've just had Flash X Juice in the break, and I'm ready to go in this game. Ready and pumped. Oh, and I'm burn on the blue side. So glad to hear it. <laughs> Definitely, I mean, just more of the same, very traditional meta. One kind of off meta pick, though. Tyra's going for the Glaive. Not a hero that we've seen too much of. Super excited to see Hundor on the Ankh in this mix. I think the skill cap on Anka is absolutely incredible. I fully expect to see some dirty, dirty plays coming out of Hundor. Things about to get spicy though. Hundor goes in, lands that B. That's a big push onto the Tony who's now isolated. Silver Skull taking lots of damage, but kiting back nicely as Tyra's as well. Sapphire gonna get decimated in case so they make short work. You aggress in our jungle? No way. Palmatoro moves forward, has popped his flask already, quickly backs out, and that is gonna be a hole load of kills maybe a delayed ace going over to queso here as they do manage to dodge out that oh there we go tyrus picks up the delayed ace and that is all five members killed five kills at the start of the game every buff now looking like it's going to go the way of queso that is one way to get things started for the side of queso they had the 20 and oh perfect game last game i would be super stoked to be able to see them replicate the same success by you my friend stepping up big time into these shoes it might be time for him to come out of retirement uh, i think i think the cooling is there you're not going to get hair back anytime soon mate so you need to uh need to be looking towards your pro career again <laughs> so be able to be able to buy be able to buy your pro pro hair from your pro career <laughs> buy, buy your pro hair for your pro career I, I i'm winding him up i i actually love bio so you know i'm glad I do to too. see him do I'm He's glad to see guy. him doing really well. I'm glad to see him doing really, really well here. And again, that was a nice start there as, uh, for Tyrus as well, who on this Glaive, it's, it's a pick that you see sometimes in solo queue. I think like Glaive is a really good solo queue pick because he's one of those sort of heroes that if you're good, you can make things happen. Uh, and it's good to see Tyrus now flexing that. It looks like he's going towards a... Oh, he's almost at that spell sword with the, uh, the heavy steel and the chronograph picked up already. And again, something that, that Kesa do really well is abuse those item advantages. Yeah, Hagman going for this Vox one more time. He's got the CP buff. No crystal items in his kit yet. So if it is another CP Vox, it, we will find out very shortly. You know, if you are on the side of Spurn Skull Block, you got a little bit more range this game. You have the Celeste in the back line. You have the Gwen in the back line. You have Reza who can step in and out of Vox's range. I think that that would actually play into a CP Vox much better. Celeste afterburned gonna be able to uh get out of that one cleanly though yeah it's uh, an attempted push another big five-man group up in this mid lane but as you can see Kato much much further in terms of the right of advantages hegman overextending but has got that flash to keep him safe he will go down that's that first kill is that what Fern need to get themselves back into this game as bayou could be the second target here he goes down over the wall to dawn hondor though very fed now with a heavy prism and an eclipse prism is going to be able to clean up two for himself silver knight is going to back off Dawn is going to be the next target who's forced to pop his own flask. And Hundor may be searching with an A and a B to try and clean this one up there. Oh, just misses. Just misses. He's not going to overextend too much. And I think Tyra's trying his best in a two versus one situation will go down eventually to the Chernwalker tick. However, Queso do come out with the CP buff still in their favor. Yeah, for sure. Definitely for first Fern Skull Blocker to go down 0-5 and keep their composure like that and be able to put three kills on the board in that engagement. I think that that's great for them. It shows that they do have somewhat of a composure despite, again, this uphill battle. Kessel is such a good team that you really need to step it up big time to be able to compete with them. They're looking to get aggressive though. Dorn, very, very low. I do not think he's going to be able to secure his Treant and hopefully Fern is able to continue keep their composure here. Pablo Toro actually has to get a huge amount of shielding coming out from his flask and from Bayou, a clutch Vanguard from Bayou to keep Palmaturo alive there. And they're gonna trade two for one, oh sorry, two for zero. And that's gonna be the weapon power Trion secured by Tyra's and Hunter. They're gonna be donated over to Tyra's, of course, because he'll make the most use out of it. And again, 2K gold lead by four minutes. Queso looking good. Absolutely. I, one thing that I don't think we've actually touched on too much is how different the contract meta is. 
Earlier on in 5v5, we saw so much of the Iron Guard contract, but ever since 3.6, ever since VPL has picked back up, we have seen so much Dragon Blood contract and actually so much Protector contract too. Bayou with that Protector contract, and on top of that, the bases to Crucible is his first item. That Vanguard able to keep Palmator alive in that last engagement was so strong. Reza, though. You're supposed to be the one dealing the burst damage. Unfortunately, in this situation, you're going to be the one getting bursted, my friend. See you later. Hundor Tyra is picking up another kill in the top lane. How many shots of glass at five minutes for Hundor on this anchor? That's the first big item spike. You use that to try and snowball it out, and you can see the damage that he's doing at this point is pretty insane. I mean, imagine hitting a shot of glass spike before a Reza hits his aftershock spike. In the meantime, in the bot side of the map, it's an engage by the Tony. They're trying to kite backwards. Pamotori doesn't have that flask. It is so, so low for Tony as he actually gets that shield up. Bayou trying to force them forward. Hegman looking for the kills. Great core collapse from the Celeste, but unfortunately not enough to zone away. The resonance bounces. Dawn even sticking around for a couple of extra CS. Palmatore finds another engage. That's going to be a kill. Two for zero once more. And Queso business as usual. Yeah, putting up so many kills this early. I mean, Attendix on the Celeste going down 0-3. King Rurito official, 1-4 and four on the Reza. That's not where you're going to want to be sitting. Queso, I love this much earlier Ghost Wing take or attempt to take on their behalf earlier on in this game. Hegman should position aggressively, which he will. Make sure Dorn and Saphir are not able to contest this. Hondor, as soon as he marks the target. See ya later, Gwen. And he's going to get another one there onto the side, and they're going to pick up the Ghost Wing to boot. Looking more aggressive, although in the early game, oh my word, Attendix goes down. Hundor did have to use his ultimate, but it's the first time he's had to this entire game. He is 606 on this, what I think is bot lane CP Anka. <laughs> and Anka he is certainly strutting his stuff. Anka is absolutely disgusting. Again, such a high skill cap hero, a player who's so mechanically gifted, such as Hundor, definitely playing her to her full potential. In my opinion, Anka is actually the single strongest hero in update 3.6. No surprise to see Hundor just tearing this game absolutely wide open, hitting these early, early, early item power spikes. He's already level eight, sitting three levels ahead of some of these other carries. He's just an absolute monster. Ooh, Tyrus didn't quite find the afterburn there. They are taking turret quite heavily. Tyrus is going to be forced to pop his flask that will get him out of there. But unfortunately, Fern, just not in a position, even if they did use the pull from Chermwalker, there's, there's just no way they get anything out of it. Chermwalker now going very low. Bayou trying to pick that off. A nice defensive ultimate from Sephiro from Dawn, but it will not do much for Hundor as he continues to dive on this anchor. And that's going to be another clean tower dive sweep. This could be the mid lane tower going down as well. Jesus, this this is this is a bloodbath. This is decimation and Queso are now, what, 8,000 gold up in the lead? Yeah, 8,000 gold. Eight minutes, exactly kind of the acceleration that we saw in this last game. Hundor on this Anka, if I were on Fern Skull Blacka, I would be pulling my hair out. He is so far ahead. Attendix isn't safe in this backline. Dorn isn't safe in this backline. He's going to mark someone. He's going to go in. He's going to blow them up. And he's going to continue to just rack up these kills and decimate the side of Fern Skull Blacka. Unfortunately, Bio giving up his life there. He didn't have that fountain. Did pop the flask, but it wasn't enough. They did overextend just a little bit on that tier 2 turret dive there. But here comes Hondor. He's thirsty for blood. Can he land an A? Because he does, does so much damage at this point in time. Maybe even waiting for that B reset. Look for an A. Get onto the Celeste if he can. That's what he's going to do. Doesn't have enough to kill her off. Didn't want to use that ultimate. And the fountain comes down too. In the meantime, Tyra's got locked in a 2 versus 1 versus the Gwen and the Tony. Ends up going down. Spellfire, one of my favorite additions to come to the Sovereign's Rise. The Mortal Wound on Crystal Powered Abilities. So fun. That's why the Fountain was forced out. Dorn going to tick very, very low. The burst damage out of Aka. What is that? That's absolutely insane. He's going to continue. It just these, he, he can do whatever he wants at this point. If we... We're to see a 1v5. I think Anka is going to be the hero to do it and definitely going to be one of the favorites in terms of heroes to put up some of these highlight real style clips. And Hondor definitely has the mechanics to make them happen.
yeah, she's incredibly fun to play. So much interaction between her abilities as well, and that's one of the beauties of Vainglory's hero design, that even with just the three abilities, they still feel very complex. That is walking into a death trap. That is going to be two kills for the anchor. And Hundor now at 12, 0, and 7 at 10 minutes into the game. What an insane stat line to have. Queso not pushing their advantage too much in terms of map objectives right now, with only one turret on the board. Hondo is going to pick up that CP buff for himself. I think just at this point in time, when you're so far ahead, Ghost Wing's up. Go for Ghost Wing. Start to take down some of these turrets. You need to, you know, look towards finishing the game as quickly as possible. Yeah, absolutely. Hondor, just run around, blow everything up, make it a quick game, put Fern School Black out of their misery. He's going to go in. Gwen, it, she was there less than a half second later. She was gone. Tyra is picking up more kills on the other side of things. Yeah, he gets a double kill here as the Shermwalker goes down. A massive dive from Honda. Oh my god, that is decimation from Queso. And the ace comes through at 11 minutes into the game. Hondo's going to dive across the tower. They should be able to at least push on to this uh, this choke point turret now. And I would, that might be them getting an armory. Yeah, I would love to see Pomator start up this gold ghost wing. Just solo it. Give yourself, your team, the extra damage buff. Even though Bayou in this front line... Gonna be taking a little bit low with Hundor there standing behind him. It's not even gonna matter. He can back him up. Great block though on the bottom boom. Yeah, and that's another two kills for Hundor. 16-09. He's not done yet. He's gonna continue to go in. Doesn't block the Celeste core collapse, which will get her out of that situation. But right now, oh, he's doing, he's diving it. That's another big ultimate from him. He's going to do his best, but he gets cleaned up by the ultimate from the Reza. He was looking for the pentakill here, but this could be an 11 minute win now for Queso, who just pushed down that mid lane. They're trying to get the kill onto uh, King Rudy, but that will not be enough. And now they just have to chunk their way through this vein crystal slowly 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 i think fern are going to try and stop them though looks like the tony taunt goes in this is going to be an engage by fern maybe looking to clean up but hegman hegman's strong we haven't talked about him he's actually in a really strong position and he is chunking people on this vox are just two items right now nine breaking point stacks already built up but it's enough is enough for queso can't quite finish the game off this push yeah they're gonna they're gonna back out they're gonna reset they're all sitting on a time pick up some more Big item spikes, the Pulse Weave onto the Glaive, which I actually think is a really interesting pickup for a Glaive, but, you know, do what you can. Unfortunately, Hegman, gonna stick around a little bit too long, get caught out, and uh, fall to Fern's Kablaka. I think Pulse Weave is one of those items that's just just good on a lot of melee heroes. I don't think Glaive particularly needs it, but here it a lot is. of people are under it. The 1v4, oh, the 1v5. Anchor, we go. Anchor no. going in doesn't manage to get it. A little bit too... Uh, too angsty from uh from hundo that really wanted the 1v5 pentakill i think but he didn't find the block unfortunately if he would have found the block at collapse or the trespass i think he might have been able to do it tyra is though doing a lot of damage still on this uh, glaive right now spell sword into breaking point not going to stack as quickly as if you had a thorough blade but still will stack fairly easily at this point in time he gets the nice afterburn onto king rudy isolates him from the team that's another chain stun going through and unfortunately they don't have the reflex blocks to deal with it palmatura and bayou really not doing damage but hegman is making his way back in there's the ultimate the engage by palmatura that's going to pick up one now hegman trying to kite backwards but this uh well, this Reza are actually doing a decent amount of damage this game, and Hegman and Bayou are going to be forced out as Dawn actually putting out some serious numbers as Palmatoro himself doing what he can to try and chase him down. Here comes Hondor, though. Hondor found his target. That's one. He's looking for two. Resets. Get the second one. Does get the second one. The Spellfire ticks down. Now he's going to go into Sephira. Dodges out the hook really nicely. Also looking to get a triple kill. Come on, give him the Penta. You know you want to. He's going to start on this Vein Crystal. This should be the game for Queso. Yeah, I don't think Fernisco Black are going to be able to do anything to stop them down. A little bit sloppy play coming out of the side of Queso. I think when you do get that far ahead, you, you can have some fun with it. Do what you can. Oh, Hegman picking up the great kill right there. Everyone teleporting back into the base. Queso has all five. Two quick, clean, crisp games by Queso. Certainly room for improvement. Hundor, 22 kills, you mad lad. Anka definitely showing why she has been banned in so many of these vpl matches i would be shocked if fern skoblaka could do it all over again if they would give hundor the anka once again yeah look incredibly good and that will be the final game of our european section of vpl today I'm gonna hand it back over the desk to round out the day <laughs>